The series circuit consists of a power supply and a minimum of two consumers, in our case two resistors. The first thing we can notice is that the same current flows through both resistors. To calculate this current we use Ohm's law. But Ohm's law mentions only one resistor. Well, we will calculate one common resistor for the whole series circuit. Series circuit can be seen as a necklace. Each part of the necklace, although different, is connected to its neighbor in a row. The total weight of the necklace is the sum of all its individual parts. Thus, we can present our circuit as just one resistor that will represent the sum of resistors R1 and R2. In case there are several resistors in series, we just simply add them up and get the total resistance of the series circuit, as shown by the official equation. Now that we know the total resistance, we use Ohm's law to calculate the current of the series circuit. If you don't know how Ohm's law works, watch my video about it first. The link is in the video description. Now that we know the current of the series circuit, it remains to calculate only the voltages V1, and, V2. You can always easily check that you have calculated everything well because in the end you add up the individual voltages on the resistors, in our case V1 and V2, and you get the amount of supply voltage. Now that we know all the equations, let's check how it works in practice. In the first example, we will use real values. So, the supply voltage and resistor values are known and we need to calculate the current and voltages V1 and V2. We first calculate the total resistance. Then the current, and, the voltages V1 and V2. Finally, we check whether the sum of voltages V1 and V2 is equal to the supply voltage. If so, we calculated everything correctly. In the second example, we have a case that engineers encounter on a daily basis. For example, if you have a device that does not have a signal lamp when it is turned on, or if a new PCB is being designed and we want to have it, then pay attention to how it is done properly. Basic parameters of electronic components are available from the manufacturer. This is how we come to the initial values. For example, our diode has an operating voltage of 3 volts and a maximum current of 2 milliamperes. Suppose our device uses a voltage of 24 volts. Then we have to calculate the resistor to limit the current through the series circuit to 2 milliamperes. Also, we need to provide 3 volts for the diode to work properly. This means that the rest of the voltage must remain on the resistor. You have probably noticed that the diode current is actually the current through the whole circuit. We use now known values and confirm that all the remaining voltage is on the resistor. And, we come to the most important part of this task and that is calculating the value of the resistor. Why the most important? Well, because it depends on the resistor whether everything will work properly. Using Ohm's law we calculate the value of the resistor 10.5 kilo ohms and this is the value below which we must not go. With this value, the maximum diode load as well as the maximum brightness is achieved. For safety reasons, it is better to round this value to 11 kilo ohms. If we want to reduce the light intensity, we simply choose a resistor of a higher value according to our own wishes, while still providing a minimum current through the diode. The minimum current information is also provided by the diode manufacturer. So, from 11 kilo ohms upwards is allowed but not less because it can damage the LED. It was all about a series circuit. Let's see how the parallel circuit works. Parallel as well as serial circuit makes the most basic knowledge in electrical engineering and without that knowledge no one can be successful in this industry. If you watch the video to the end, again I will give you an example from the real world, with which you will understand how important this topic really is and how much it will help you become better in electronics in the future. So let's go.
As you can see, a parallel circuit consists of a power supply and a minimum of two or more consumers, in our case two resistors. We can immediately notice that both resistors are connected directly to the power supply. This means that their voltage will be the same as the supply voltage and we will denote it by V12. Why denote additional voltage V12? Well, because this is a simple example it may not be necessary but in a more complex circuit this parallel resistor circuit can be found in series with other resistors and then the V12 can be significantly lower than the supply voltage. We will talk about this in detail in the following video about mixed circuits. As with a serial circuit, we can also simplify a parallel circuit. In this case, we calculate the total resistance according to the equation. This equation is used only for two parallel resistors. An official equation can be used for three or more resistors. Perhaps the official equation is too complex for many students because it is expressed through conductivity. Fortunately, there is another way, and although it is a bit longer, it is more acceptable to many students, the total resistance for the first two resistors is calculated and, then that result is recalculated together with the third resistor and so on. The result is exactly the same and it is up to you to choose which method of calculation you prefer. Take for example that we have three resistors whose values are 10, 5 and 3 kilo ohms. For a more accurate calculation, it is better to convert kilo ohms to ohms. Then we enter these values into the equation and calculate the right side of the equation. In the end, such a simplified equation is easy to solve and we get the value of the total resistance of 1,58 kilo ohms. If we calculate the total resistance in another way then we will first calculate the resistor R12. Then we include this value in the new equation and associate the resistor R3. The total resistance Rx is also 1.58 kilo ohms. So just pick which way you prefer and that is all. Now that we have solved the resistors, it remains to solve the currents in the parallel circuit. We return to the first diagram where we see that the current I is divided in the first node into currents I1 and I2. I1 flows through the resistor R1, and the current I2 through the resistor R2. In the second node these currents are collected again in the current I. According to Kirchhoff's law, the sum of currents flowing into that node is equal to the sum of currents flowing out of that node. In other words, the algebraic sum of currents in a network of conductors meeting at a point is zero. In the end we only have to calculate the currents I1 and I2. V12 is actually the common voltage across resistors R1 and R2, in our case the supply voltage. Finally, using Ohm's law, we calculate the currents I1 and I2. That should be all you need to know about a parallel circuit, so that you can further independently calculate and design these types of circuits. Let's apply this knowledge in practice on a simple example. The supply voltage is 12 volts and the resistors R1 and R2 have values of 10 kilo ohms. It is necessary to calculate the total resistance and all currents in the circuit. First we calculate the total resistance. Then the total current I. Then the currents I1 and. I2. Finally we add the currents I1 and I2 and we have to get the same result. This is proof that we have calculated everything well. In the second example, we will see the actual application of a parallel circuit, as I promised. For example, 
we need to limit the current to 1,17 mA with a tolerance of 0,03 mA at a voltage of 5 volts. In the real world we have to use the actual values of the resistors which is sometimes not so easy. But why? Because there are billions of different values of resistors and it is not profitable to have just about every value. Therefore, standardized values of resistors are used and their combinations can give others. This is a calibration of a measuring device and it is necessary to get as close as possible to the optimal value. Fortunately, there are tolerances, so it makes it a lot easier for us. So let's start calculating. We will first calculate the optimal value of the resistor. Then we calculate the minimum value. And once again we calculate the maximum value of the resistor Rx. All values between minimum and maximum are acceptable but we will look for the best result. Now we come to the interesting part. It is clear that 4.274 kilo ohms does not exist. Since the resistance Rx is always less than the resistances R1 and R2, we will use this and set R1 a little higher than Rx and by adding the resistance R2 we will try to bring the total resistance closer to optimal. We know the initial values of Rx and R1, let's calculate R2. We must first adjust the initial equation. Then we enter the values of the given resistance R1 and the calculated optimal resistance. We got a resistance value of R2 of 18.05 kilo ohms but we have already said that we will use the standard values by choosing 18 kilo ohms. You can immediately assume that the total current will be a bit higher because we chose a lower resistance than calculated. Now that we know R2 as well, let's calculate the actual Rx. And, we won. The overall resistance is almost ideal and is in a safe zone. We check the current at the end and also confirm that the deviations are minimal. With this we can say that we have successfully limited the current with great accuracy and the device is too well calibrated. If you like this video please subscribe, like, comment and suggest and expect many more interesting videos very often. Thanks for watching and see you.